All right, we're ready. Okay. Good morning, and welcome to another lecture given by the Meridian class. First of all, this is a school and not a church. Neither are we associated with any religious organization, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh given to Dr. Henry C. Kinley in the year of 1931. And the charts you see pictorially illustrated before you are the results of that divine vision and revelation. I will be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true and correct name of our Heavenly Father, which is once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is of from a source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct name of I help the Father Yahweh, they have usually inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh now, taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself, is known as Elohim. Now, superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state, Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and revelation as stated in Exodus 24, 9, and 10. Then when a Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember, they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now when your translators has come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim now manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Joshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators have come across the true and correct original Hebrew name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporeal shape and form known as the Word of the Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language and did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renders of our Heavenly Father, true and correct name, Yahweh and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims, the primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, 
saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah, and tent to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. We have prayer by Dr. Miranda Gonzalez and scripture lesson by Dr. Vanessa Collins. Scripture lesson be 1 Corinthians, the first and second chapters. Good morning, class. And let us let us bow hard in our mind for prayer. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father Yahweh, we are indeed thankful and grateful that you, first of all, woke us up this morning, clothed in our right mind, still with a sincere desire and focus on you on those things that you have prepared for the sons in light to be partaker of in this last day and time. We are thankful that you have made us to see, know, and understand your ever presence and that all things whatsoever are of thee. We're thankful for your allowing us an opportunity to meet in this manner, to hear, share, and partake of this divine vision and that revelation, for giving us those things that we need and that we do use this knowledge every day in our everyday life. Thankful for those hearts that you move to be on the call. Keep us focusing today on those things that you are about to present to us in this setting, but also anything that happens to us today or any other day that we keep our focus on thee. So as we meet this morning, give us those things on an individual basis that we need to be able to stand and withstand during these perilous times that you have foretold us of. These and all blessings we ask in thy son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Scripture lesson for this morning is 1 Corinthians 1st and 2nd chapters. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible, contain the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated, 1 Corinthians 1st and 2nd chapters. Saul, called to be an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah through the will of Yahweh, and Sothenes, our brother, unto the assembly of Yahweh, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Yahshua the Messiah, called to be sons, with all that in every place call upon the name of Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from Yahweh our Father and from the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. I thank my Elohim always on your behalf for the grace of Yahweh, which is given you by Yahshua the Messiah, that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of the Messiah was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh is faithful, by whom ye were called into the fellowship of his Son, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, that ye all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of cloth, 
that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you said, I am of Saul, and I of Apollos, and I of Kepha, and I of the Messiah. Is the Messiah divided? Was Saul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Saul? I thank Yahweh that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For the Messiah sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the sacrifice of the Messiah should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of Yahweh. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not Yahweh made foolish the wisdom of this world? For when in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh. It pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach the Messiah crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, the Messiah is the power of Yahweh and the wisdom of Yahweh. Because the foolishness of Yahweh is wiser than men, and the weakness of Yahweh is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. But Yahweh has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath Yahweh chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in the Messiah Yahshua, who of Yahweh is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in Yahweh. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of Yahweh. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahshua the Messiah and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Yahweh. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age that come to know. But we speak the wisdom of Yahweh, hidden in a mystery, which Yahweh hath ordained before the ages unto our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the king of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which Elohim hath prepared for them that love him. But Yahweh hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of Elohim knoweth no man, but the spirit of Elohim. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, 
but the spirit which is of Elohim, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of Yahweh, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, revealing spiritual things to spiritual persons. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. For he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of Yahweh that he may teach it? But we who have the mind of the Messiah. 1 Corinthians 1st and 2nd chapters. Hallelujah. All right, good morning, class. My name is Carla, Carla Carter. I'll be the moderator or the host for this morning session. Um, our first speaker for this morning session will be from the Meridian class, um, Dr. Dorothy McNeil. Dorothy, if you can unmute yourself for me, please. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. Well, it won't let me unmute you. Um, we'll go to the next speaker while she's having, trying to figure out how to unmute herself. All right, our next speaker for this morning's um, lecture will be from the Meridian class, Dr. Roger Collins. Is he on? You can unmute yourself. Good morning. Good morning. And I am thankful to have a testimony of Yahweh and just want to ask Yahweh to remove me out of the way and speak the things that he has prepared for us this morning. And first, I just want to say that I am thankful that Yahweh has brought me to this great gospel and has given me a knowledge of him. And just to say that I am so thankful for the peace that this gospel has brought to my life because it has been such hell going on right within me. And It took Yahweh to settle me down and to bring peace into my life. And I'm thankful for that because that adversary is so slick and subtle. and the devices that he uses to distract you from staying focused on Yahweh. And one of the things that I've been dealing with is Yahweh knocking down everything that I've held in high regard. And It's been tough going through that process because, you know, 
no matter how how hard that you know i say that people places and things don't matter as i've been going through this process i see that you know i've been doing the very opposite of what we've been taught and that is to remove people, places, and things. And one thing that, you know, Yahweh has showed me that if you can't remove them, then he'll remove them. And you can't be mad at the process of how he does that, no matter how it happens. And, you know, that's one of the things that I've been fighting with that, I didn't necessarily like the way that things happen. But if I would have removed me out of the way, then I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't even have to go through this process. And so he took me back to the children of Israel down in Egypt and how when he poured those 10 devastating plagues out what he was doing was destroying all those idols and gods that they worship down there and you know you couldn't be picking and choosing how that was going to happen because yahweh has always told us that there should be none higher than him and you know we hold people and you know things to that such and those things have to be taken down and so yahweh causes events and circumstances to happen to where those things are removed out of the way and it's not that you know it's a bad thing or you know you have bad intent or whatever toward you know those situations is just that you're going about it the wrong way because we should always have Yahweh at the forefront of everything we do. And then, you know, by doing that, everything will fall in place. And so, you know, lately, like, I've had so many situations happen that has, you know, had me really frustrated. And, you know, just any and everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. And I know that, you know, that's to try to keep me distracted from Yahweh. And I've been very frustrated, you know, to the point to where I just want to throw my hands up and just, you know, just give in. And Yahweh came to me and in a conversation with with my dad and he was like don't let that bother you because I'm able to fix it and I knew that was Yahweh talking to me through my physical day because Yahweh is able to fix everything that you have going on and he was like it would be a problem if I couldn't fix it and that is so true 
if Yahweh was not able to bring that peace and quiet to your life, you would go start raving mad. And I'm just thankful for that, that, you know, Yahweh is able to do above and beyond everything that we ask. And it's not an emergency situation that we should be asking in. But in everything that we do, from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep, we should be thanking and praising Yahweh at all times. And so, you know, I'm just thankful that through this process that he has me going through, that he is able to give me, you know, some some peace in that. Because those things as they're being removed, they hurt. Because you've seen them so differently for so long. And when you finally come to the realization of what it is, it stings a little bit. As those things are being removed. But it is necessary that it is done in order for you to be reconciled back from whence you came. And that is pure spirit. Because we can't take the flesh with us. Uh, when we take this thing off, that flesh is not going. And so they have to be removed and you have to go through it in order to be that or be one with Yahweh. And so, you know, as I go through this process, I'm just asking Yahweh just to settle me and, you know, just keep the peace with me as I go through it and just give me a better understanding of, you know, his purpose and his plan as he strips me down and takes me through this process. And with these few words, I thank you. May Yahweh bless you. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Collins. All right, class. Um, I will be the next speaker. Um, if I, Charmaine, if you can help Vanessa and Miranda read for me, because I'm going to probably use a lot of scriptures. Um, well, good morning again, class. My name is Carla Carter again. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning. And I, too, want to ask Yahweh to settle me and get my thoughts, my intentions um, out of the way and just express through me um, by the knowledge and wisdom he's placed in me, the things that he has prepared for us this morning. So... Um, I'm not sure if we have any first time visitors on YouTube or in class this morning. Some will go um, the route where we can pick up everybody. Um, this is a school. It's not a church. It's not anything um, as far as religious base is concerned. The things that we teach at this school are based on facts and a divine vision. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So when we use the scriptures, because the way that um, we've been taught to do it, let's get Isaiah 8 and 20. The things that we discussed this morning, we want to use the Bible or the scriptures to prove the things that we're saying. So if we can get Isaiah 8 and 20. Before we get Isaiah 8 and 20, let's get first, no, second Peter 1 and 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second Peter. Peter 1 and 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Pause. Now, this is the first thing that we need to understand and know. <clears throat> no scripture is of any private interpretation of the prophet. They weren't given their own private interpretation. And so if they were not given their own private interpretation, you shouldn't want anybody's private interpretation either. 
So I don't want to mm. give you my private interpretation. I ask y'all to get my private interpretation out of the way and express through me the truth of the matter. Keep reading. Right. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the prophecy back then, so the scripture that we're going to go to, the law and the prophets, the prophecy was not given by man's private interpretation, but the holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And so the things that we're reading back in the law and the prophets were of the Holy Spirit. Get first, I mean, Isaiah 8 and 20 for me. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Pause for just a and second. So this is Isaiah. This is Isaiah speaking. Well, we it looks like it's Isaiah speaking, but we just read that it was a, they were he was speaking as he was moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is saying, to the law and to the testimony. And we found out the, the law is the first five books of the Bible, and the testimony or the prophets is from Joshua to Malachi. At this time, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all those scriptures, what the world called the New Testament, had not been written yet. So the scriptures that they had to go by were from Genesis to Malachi. And so Isaiah is saying to the law and to the testimony, if any man, anybody, no matter who it is, tries to tell you anything about your creator, if they do not go to the law and to the testimony, it's because what now? There is no light in them. Then that means that there's no light in them. Let's pause right there because we've talked about this before. Because we were born with a natural mind and all we were taught were natural things and inheriting a carnal mind on this side of it. Whenever we say things like light and water or baptized and things like that, we have carnal, natural connotations. And so when we say the word light, because you're carnal, your mind is going to automatically think of something bright, a bright light and things like that. We have to peel the layers back off of the, what these words mean. And so when we say there's no light in someone, that means that there's no understanding in them. They don't understand what it's about. And so if anybody's trying to tell you anything about your creator, if they do not go back to the law and the prophets to prove those things, there's bec that's because there's no understanding in them. And so why do we have to go to the law and to the prophets or to the testimony? John 5, 39. I'm going to try to set it up. And then 1 Corinthians 10, chapter somebody else. John 5, 39. First. John 5, 39. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they now, this is Yahshua. This is Yahshua. Pause for me. This is Yahshua, the Messiah, the Savior. This is Yahweh manifested in the body. And he's talking to them and he's saying, ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think you have eternal life. So that, you can't read the scriptures and just be saved just by reading the scriptures. He says, you think you have eternal life, but what? They are they which testify of me. So the scriptures are testifying to Yahshua the Messiah. That's why if anybody's trying to tell you anything about your creator or the truth or your salvation, your soul or anything like that, they must go back to the law and to the prophets because the law and the prophets is testifying to Yahshua the Messiah and Yahshua the Messiah has to turn around and testify to the, to the father. Why is that important? What's so important about that? John 17 and 1, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. You take me, you run me, you take me. We're going to run. We're going to try to catch it. Go ahead. John 17 and 1 first, and then 11, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, 
that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Pause. So, Joshua is saying, Yahweh, glorify me. And he's also saying that Joshua is going to give eternal life to as many as Yahweh has given him to give it to. So he, it, it's not given to everybody then, if that's the case. There is an elect that I have, we'll come, we'll, maybe. And so he's going to give eternal life to as many as Yahweh has given him to give it to. Read. And this is life eternal. That they might know that thou only art the true El and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. So, and this is what Yahshua is going to give them that Yahweh gave him to give it to. He's going to give them knowledge. And this is what eternal life that Yahshua is going to give them. This is what it is. That they, who is the they? The elect the ones that Yahweh chose to give it to in the first place, that they may know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah, whom he sent. Eternal life is to know that. And so if the scriptures are testifying to Yahshua the Messiah, that means that you have to look. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. Mm. Matthew eleven twenty seven, 27. And turning mm -hmm. to his disciples, he said, all things are delivered unto me of my father. Pause. Now, this is Joshua speaking again. He said, all things are delivered unto me of my father. You have so many examples back there in the law and the prophets to show this. All things are delivered unto me of my father. Read. And no man knoweth the son but the father. Now, hold on. No man knows who the son is except for the father. Read. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son. Neither knoweth any man the father except the son. Now, eternal life is to know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom he sent. Now, Yahshua is saying no man knows who the Father is except for him, and nobody knows who he is except for the Father. We in a pickle. Hmm. How are we supposed to be saved then? How are we supposed to know something then? Read. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Pause. That little three-letter word is a conjunction. It is to join two thoughts together. Mm -hmm. Now, he said, no man knows who the father is except for the son. And he, to whomsoever the son, will reveal the father to. It is possible for you to know who the father is. It is possible for you to know who Yahweh is. He's eternal life is to know him. It's eternal life to know. So don't let anybody keep telling you that you can't know Yahweh or you can't know God. You, there's nothing you can know about him for sure. That's a lot. That's not true. The scriptures don't say that. We want to know the truth of the matter. Eternal life is to know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah whom he sent. And then so Yahshua said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but the scriptures are testifying of me. Okay, Hebrews first chapter. I'm gonna try to, I'm getting there. Uh, Hebrews first chapter for me. Hebrews first chapter. Elohim, who at sundry times and in various manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Paul. Had, so who is it spoke to the fathers by the prophets? Elohim. Elohim. Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh in shape and form mm -hmm. is known as Elohim. So this is Yahweh in shape and form. So Yahweh Elohim spoke to the fathers in times past by the prophets. Mm -hmm. Read, read. Hath in these last days 
spoken unto us by his son. But in these last days, Yahweh has spoken to us by his son. Mm -hmm. So it has been Yahweh back in the law and the prophets testifying of his son. And then it's Yahweh in Yahshua the Messiah testifying of himself. Yahweh mm -hmm. shall get the glory, period, through mm -hmm. Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh said, I have purposed it. I will also bring it to pass to wit that Yahweh was in the Messiah, reconciling the world back to himself. What world is he talking about? Where was the world put at? The world was put in the man, so the man couldn't find out the things that Yahweh had done from the beginning. But now it's time for you to wake out of sleep to know. So when we go back here to the law and the prophets and see how Yahweh testified his son, that's what gives us faith in Yahshua the Messiah, that Yahweh is able to do the same thing that he did with his son. Look, we go back here to the law and the prophets. When we go back and we look at, where are we supposed to start? I, I, I want to go to the law and the prophets, but I don't even know what, it, what do I start? Do I start reading at Genesis? Do I start, where do I start reading? I don't even know where to start. We're going to start where Yahshua said, what Yahshua started at. At beginning at Moses and all the prophets, so we're going to go back to Moses. And so when you go to Moses, we find out that Yahweh gave a vision to a man named Moses at the burning bush. So we're going to go to the third chapter of Exodus and pick Moses up. We're going to just, just go pick Moses up real quick. Now we're getting strength. Exodus 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Mm -hmm. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. Mm -hmm. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Pause. Now Moses was on the backside of this mountain, minding his own business out here. Doing it, he was on his regular job, keeping the flock of his father-in-law. He was tending to the sheep. And then out of nowhere, an angel of Yahweh appeared. When you hear the word appeared, that means he had a vision. An angel of Yahweh appeared in the bush, a flaming bush. Read. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked. Mm -hmm. And behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Pause. This is important. This is imp I want y'all to get this this morning. So it, it, now it said, and he looked. You heard her say he looked. Mm -hmm. He looked. And he saw the bush was burning and not being consumed. Read. And Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight. Paul, he already looked. Huh, Paul, mm -mm. now he already looking at it. What do you mean you turning aside? If you already looking at it, that means Shirley had a read a long time ago. Turn aside means to turn from your own thoughts. So when Moses is looking at this, he's having to turn from his own thoughts about what this matter means. That's the same thing that we have to do. We always think we know it. Do you know what spirit is? Everybody's going to say, oh, yeah, I know what spirit is. Spirit is Yahweh. Okay, well, what does that mean? Oh, it's a source and a substance and a limits and a bound. That's what spirit is. No, you got to break these things down. You have to turn aside, turn away from your own thoughts about what you think something means and actually go after it. Seek Yahweh. Yahweh is knowledge. He is wisdom. He is understanding. Seek him. Seek wisdom. Seek knowledge. Seek the understanding of these things. Moses had to turn aside to see why this bush was burning and not being consumed. Read. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush does not burn. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, that's it right there. That's it now. That's it. 
Because when Yahweh sees that you turn aside to seek him and know the truth of these matters, that's when he calls you by name and he reveals it to you. So when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, what did Yahweh do? Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said. Yeah, no, y'all missing it. Now, hold on. Now, when Yahweh, now the angel appeared. Now, when Yahweh saw that Moses turned aside to see, Elohim called to him out of the midst of the bush. I thought it was the angel in the bush. We're going to get to a read, Shuba. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. Pause. Now, the angel is in the bush. Yahweh is there and saw that Moses turned aside to see this great sight. And then Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, called him by name, so he knew who he was. Moses, Moses. He said, here I am. Here am I. He said, don't come any closer. Draw not my hither. Take the shoes off of your feet for the place that you're standing on is holy ground. Moreover, he said unto him, now he's introducing himself to Moses. This is what Yahweh does when, he, when the man, when he gives a man a vision of him, he introduces himself to him. Now he's saying, moreover unto Moses, I am the Elohim of your father Amram. I'm also the Elohim of Abraham. I'm the Elohim of Isaac and I'm the Elohim of Jacob. And we go to John 4, 24 and it said, now Elohim is spirit. So he is saying, I am the spirit of your father. The spirit of Abraham, the spirit of Isaac, and the spirit of Jacob. Read. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. Cat dog, you better pause. I thought it was Elohim speaking. Now Yahweh said, is the three of them talking to him? Yahweh going to show how he, Yahweh's going to show his ways to Moses. It is eternal life that know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah who he sent. Yahweh said there is none else. Besides him, there is no savior. Read, sugar. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come mm -hmm. down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And, and pause right here. Now, pause, pause, pause. So, you have to turn like this to know that Yahweh is the only true El and Yahshua the Messiah whom he sent, right? Now, how did Yahweh see and know their affliction back down there in Egypt? Yash, when after Moses departed out of Egypt, 10 years after he departed, Yahweh manifested in a body of a 30-year-old man called Yahshua, the son of Nun. Yahshua was down here in Egypt, and he astro-projected himself to Moses down he up there in Midian at that burning bush. He didn't say, I'm coming down. He said, I am come down. I'm already here amongst my people. And I see and I know their cry by reason of their taskmaster. I am come down. Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hittites. 
Oh, wait, wait, I'll stop. Hold on, hold on. You're, you're, you was out. Your um, mic was out. I can hear anything. Start okay. again from please. Right. Eighth verse. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians mm -hmm. and to bring them up out of that land into a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto mm -hmm. the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. You still hear me, Carla? I can hear you. Okay, nice verse. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest Pause. bring. Pause for just a second. So now, Yahshua is, or Yahweh is saying, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. Then he told Moses, come now, therefore down into Egypt. Now, if I'm standing here, if I'm here in Meridian, and I tell Hoshea, come to where I am, that come now, therefore, Hoshea, that means Hoshea has to come to Meridian to where I am. Now, if I'm not there, if I'm not in Meridian, I'm not going to say come to Meridian, and I'm not there. He said, come now, therefore, Moses, down into Egypt, because that's where he was already. That was him in the body of Joshua, Astra projected himself to Moses, giving him that vision. He told Moses to come. He told Aaron to go out to meet Moses. He was down there in Egypt with Aaron when he told him to go to Moses. My, my point is that was him manifesting in the body of Joshua, the Messiah. It is eternal life to know that Yahweh is the only true El and Joshua, the Messiah, whom he sent. Because even though he manifested in the body of Yahshua, the son of Nun, that body was not the specially prepared body to give eternal life to those that were believed. But that was him manifesting in the flesh. And so when Yahweh told Moses, come now, therefore, and I'm going to send you. Go ahead and read. I don't want to rush it. Read it. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto Elohim, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When and thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, Ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. Now Moses asked a good question. Who am I, Yahweh, that I should bring him up out of Egypt? And so Yahweh said, certainly, Moses, I will be with thee. I've never sent a man to do anything for me. I've always come and done it myself. And so that was not Moses that delivered the children of Israel up out of Egypt. That was Yahweh that delivered them up out of Egypt by the hand of Moses, literally, right. with that rod in his hand. Mm-hmm. Certainly I will be with you, but this Moses is going to be a token unto you. This is how you're going to know. This is when you're going to know that I sent you. Not if you bring them up out of Egypt, but when you bring them up out of Egypt, you shall serve me on this mountain. Now, mind you, when they come up out of Egypt, they're going to be back on this mountain. This is the same mountain that Yahweh took him up to and showed him the panorama, the, the vision. Read. 13th verse, and mm -hmm. Moses said unto Elohim, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and they shall say to me, the Elohim, and, I sh and shall say unto them, the Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asher Aya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, 
I will be has sent me unto you. Hold on, like, hold on. Um, I don't know why it's going in and out, but I can't hear you. And then you go, oh, you're going in and out. Is it my internet? Can somebody else in class let me know if it's me or not? Somebody else need to do it. Then. It's probably yours because she's coming through playing to, well, to me, she's playing. Yes. Okay, so it's my internet. Okay. All right, let's try it. Let's, let's try it again then. Okay. Um, let's start at the 13th verse. Thir 13. 13. 13. Okay. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya, Asher, Aya. Now this, is, this part right here is very important. So eternal life is to know that Yahweh is the only true Elohim and Joshua the Messiah whom he sent. Now he's, he gave a man named Moses a vision and he's introducing himself to Moses and Moses asked the perfect question. When I go unto them down in Egypt and say the Elohim of our fathers has sent me, they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? What is your name? And Yahweh said, Aya, Asher, Aya. I will be whatever I will to be. That is very important. For some reason, we can't grasp that or we don't believe Yahweh. We let Yahweh be everything. And even we don't even let him be the devil. But we cannot let him be us. It's impossible mm. for him to be us. I want the truth of the matter. Aya, Asher, Aya. I will be whatever I will to be. And he demonstrated that to Moses with those demonstrations. He said, eventually, he told Moses, what's that in your hand, Moses? I'm going to show you that I will be whatever I will to be. He said, a rod. Cast it on the ground, Moses. Cast it on the ground and turned into a serpent. Moses took off. Yahweh said, come back, come back, come back. Pick it up by the tail, Moses. What are you showing, Yahweh? I will to be the rod. I will to be the serpent. I, Yahweh, do all these things. The rod is talking about Yahshua the Messiah because the 11th chapter of Isaiah said there should come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch should go through, go through his roots. That was Joshua Messiah. Then he put it on the ground and the truth turned into a serpent. He picked it up by the tail. That's how you pick Satan up. You pick him up by the lies that he tells. And once you pick him up by the lies that he tells, you got the right again. You got the truth mm -hmm. of the matter. Then he said, moreover, put your hand in your bosom, Moses. He put his hand in his bosom. He pulled it out. It was leprous white as snow. He put his hand back in his bosom, pulled it out. It was his whole flesh again. What are you talking about, Yahweh? I will to be the disease. I will to be the cure. I, Yahweh, do all these things. And I, look, I ain't got time to go through all the things that Yahweh's healed me from without a doctor. I ain't telling you not to go to your doctor. But I'm telling you, when you go to the doctor and they can't do nothing for you, who else do you have to depend on? But you have to believe, not just believe, nope, I take that back. You have to know that he is able who is it that mm -hmm. put it on you? Mm -hmm. That's right. Who is it that is the disease? You can speak to the cells of your body and make them correct themselves. I'm not telling you what I've heard. I'm telling you what I know to be true. You can speak to the pain in your body and it can go away because you have to recognize who you are, though. Recognize who those cells, what those cells are. Ooh. I will to be the disease. I will to be the cure. Then he told Moses, when you go down there, you're going to take a, 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 a basin and dip it in the water and pour it on the ground. It's going to turn into blood. And he said, and this is what he told if they don't hear the voice of these two signs, then you take the, the basin and dip it in the water and pour it. It's going to turn into blood. What do you mean the voice of these signs? Because these things speak to you. 
And so Moses was supposed to take these signs down to the, the uh, elders of Israel. And so Moses, go, then he said, moreover, this is what you should tell them. Yahweh is my name. Why is it so important to give them the name? Of, give them the name? Because it's eternal life to know that Yahweh is the only true El and Yahshua Messiah whom he sent. And so he gave Moses his name. He gave Moses those three signs and Moses had the rod in his hand. And so Moses said, well, I can't speak plain, Yahweh. He had all these excuses. I can't speak plain. Send somebody else. Yahweh got rid of the, who made man's mouth, Moses? Did I not, Yahweh, make the blind and the dumb? And I know Aaron, the Levite, your brother, he speaks eloquently. He's on his way out to meet you right now. How is he on his way out? He hadn't seen his brother in 40 years. I told you where he was talking to Aaron. He was down there talking to Aaron, told Aaron to go to where Moses was. And he told Moses to come to where he was. So Aaron is on his way out to meet you right now. He could speak eloquently. So that's the case, Moses. You will be like him to Elohim, to Pharaoh, and Aaron will be like him to the prophet. And so now you have Yahweh's name, the rod, Elohim, and the prophet. You have the law, the prophet, Yahweh's name, and Yahshua, which is the rod, coming down to utterly destroy Egypt so they can let his son singular go. Now, I want you to look at this chart here. And look, this is like a snapshot of your mind. This is like unto heaven. This is like unto, this is Yahweh. Elohim, Yahshua. You have Canaan land, the wilderness, and Egypt, the most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. When they were down here in Egypt, they were being held in bondage by Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Yahweh saw fit to give a man a vision and a revelation, give him his name, the truth, which is the rod, and the law and the prophets to come down into that black state of consciousness, that dark state of consciousness or ignorance to destroy Pharaoh and the Egyptians and Egypt itself, which is likened to the carnal mind, to bring his son about of Egypt to give them this land to inherit. Now, after Moses goes down into Egypt and Yahweh, I say Yahweh, Yahweh, utterly destroys Egypt with those 10 devastating plagues and delivers his people out of Egypt, there's some things that have to happen. Now, before they could come up out of Egypt, this very last plague, which was the plague of death, Yahweh told Moses to tell the children of Israel, not the Egyptians, but the children of Israel, they had to take out a lamb of the first year, had to be a male lamb without spot and without blemish. What is this talking about? Yahshua said these things are testifying of him. So they had to be without spot and without blemish. The lamb did. They had to take the, they took the lamb out on the 10th of April, held it over to the 14th, had to hold the lamb over for four days. What is that talking about? It's talking about Yahshua Messiah being the true lamb of Yahweh. He is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And if you look at the pattern, on the first day, Yahweh said, let there be light. But he waited to the fourth day to bring the sun in. And Yahshua himself did not, Yahweh himself didn't come in as Yahshua until the 4,000th year. And so that is the lamb being held over for four days. Because Yahweh said a thousand years is one day, one day is a thousand years. Now, they had to take the blood of the lamb, strike the top of the doorpost, the two side posts, and dip it from a basin, giving you four points of blood. They had to roast the lamb with the inwards in it, and they could not break the bones of the lamb. And every household had to have the sufficient amount for that household. They had to eat the lamb. They had to eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. And could nothing of the lamb be left over the next morning. Whatever was left over, they had to burn it with fire. What is that talking about? Because when Yahshua was crucified and put in that tomb, there could be no body left over when they came in, when he resurrected. That body, that specially prepared body was consumed. Now, 
all those that had the lamb in them, they were told to have, have their shoes on their feet and their staff in there had to be ready. They had to be girded and be ready to move in haste. So when the death angel passed over and Yahweh destroyed the male, the firstborn of male, firstborn male of everybody, man and beast, down there in Egypt who did not have the blood of the lamb um, in their household on the inside of their door. That's when Pharaoh was like, okay, y'all get up out of here. And they moved with haste and they spoiled the Egyptians and the Egyptians gave them the gold, the silver, the myrrh, the, the linen, the, everything that they were going to need to serve Yahweh with. What is that talking about? All of the substance, all of the things that they were going to need to build this tabernacle, which is likened to Elohim, it didn't have any shape or form whatsoever. None whatsoever. Dang, I don't want to go that way. So when they got out here to the Red Sea, they got out here to the Red Sea. They had two mountains on either side of them. And then you have Pharaoh in hot pursuit now. All of a sudden, Yahweh uh, put in Pharaoh's heart. Well, who's going to build my treasure cities? We got to go back and get these people and bring them back down into, into Egypt. What is that talking about? Same thing with you. When Yahweh frees you from something, you best to believe that them same old thoughts, them same old uh, desires are going to come back up again to see whether or not you love Yahweh. Yahweh tests you to see whether or not you love him or not. Whether or not you have passed from those things or not. And so, of course, it's going to come back around and try to bring you back into bondage to those things. Tried me last night. And so they start crying to Moses. Moses, you brought us out here that die. Oh, but we told you we were better off in Egypt and we told you to leave us alone and all this and all that. And what did Moses do? He cried unto Yahweh. And what did Yahweh tell Moses? The same thing he's telling you today. Stand still. Where though? In your mind, stop letting these thoughts overtake you. You just worried about this. Well, what about this? Stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. Yahweh has saved Israel alive this day. And the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see again no more. When are you going to believe Yahweh? And so Yahweh said, what's that in your hand? Moses, hold up the rod. And the rod, when he held the rod up, a way was made out of no way. The Red Sea parted and they went through on dry ground. When you hold up the truth in your mind, I'm not, not just the truth, the, the word, the truth, not just the image that you see on the, on the chart. When you hold up the truth or the knowledge of Yahweh and his purpose. When you hold up the, the thing that Yahweh, when Yahweh tells you that he shall put no more on you than you can bear. When you hold up the fact that Yahweh told you all things work to the good of them that love Yahweh. No matter what it is, when you hold up the fact that Yahweh told you that he is able to do above all that you ask or even think of him. When you hold those things up, a way out of no way is made. To be used to going through things. The pieces of cream for them. They had to be easy to go straight to Canaan land. There had to be some dying off. Still filthy. Still dirty. Cleaned up. Learn to be content with whatever state that you're in, knowing that out of this flesh, your Redeemer liveth. So, not sometimes, not when he's giving you the things that you want in this world and everything, peace and cream. Then, oh, Yahweh, bless me, he gave me that loan. I knew I wasn't supposed to get that loan, and I got that, that, that. No, when the, when the car breaks down and you ain't got no ride and you can't get nobody answer the phone, when all oh, hell breaks loose in your household, when your body is aching and you're tired of it aching. And the doctors can't help you. When your thoughts won't shut off so where you can't get any sleep. You got to know him then too. You have to stand still and see the salvation 
of Yahweh, not just from saving your soul, but saving you from every situation that he puts you in. Who put them down there in Egypt? Who put them in bondage? Yahweh did. Why so? So they would know that he is the one, that he is the only true heir. That's right. So that he would get the glory. Oh, y'all was sick of us. But I complain and tell. I know he's sick of us. No, he is. Mm -hmm. Only by his grace and mercy, he had destroyed our ignorant asses. All the things that y'all is done for us in our life, but we still got the nerve to let faith. Hmm. All right. Nobody else. Preach. Look now. So when I got out here through the Red Sea, y'all would destroy Pharaoh and his host. And they were able to see what Yahweh had saved them from. Yahweh has shown you what he saved you from. Why go back to those things? Yahweh saved you from the bondage of thinking you got to celebrate Christmas. Why go back to that crap? I don't want my children to... You better, all right now. Okay, you know what? Keep going. So when they got out here to the wilderness, it wasn't but three days. And they started murmuring and complaining. Oh, we thirsty. Oh, we this, we that. They didn't have any water to drink. And so what did Yahweh do? Yahweh showed Moses, uh, the, um, I think it's called Mara, Mara? Mara. They were Mara. And that river that was there, it was bitter for them to taste it. They couldn't, it was too bitter. Them to drink it. Yahweh showed Moses a tree. <laughs> Yahweh told Moses to put that tree in the water. It was a sweet, I mean, it made the water sweet to taste. What is that talking about? All these things are talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Because look, when they went to John to be baptized and they got in that water, they had to confess their sins. They had to confess that they were unclean, they were sinners, they were dead. And so when they put those Jews, those dead Jews in that water, it made that water bitter. But when Yahshua the Messiah came to John to be baptized, the tree of life, and he put him in that water, that made it sweet to drink. Now you can drink of the living water, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Look, everything that happened in the law of the prophets is talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Look, let's keep going. So then... So then he gave them water to drink. They started complaining about they were hungry. Y'all just killed a lamb and ate the lamb and ate good. Y'all got all the lamb. Y'all can't think to do that. <laughs> oh, we hungry, Moses. We, we had onions in Egypt. We were better off in Egypt. In 1 Corinthians 10 chapter, we didn't read it, but Yahweh said that those things were done for our example, so we wouldn't do the same thing that they were doing. They pissed Yahweh off by murmuring and complaining all the time. Miss Jada talked about it last week. Yahweh showed her that she was just complaining all the time. You asked Yahweh to give you a job. You asked Yahweh to give you a house. You asked Yahweh to give you some peace. You asked Yahweh to get you away from this uh, woman or man so you won't be so sick, you know, going through the stuff that you're going through. And he gave you that, then all of a sudden you complain about being lonely. I'm lonely. I ain't got nobody. To be. I'm sick of being lonely. I'm tired of going through this all the time. You were just complaining about being in a relationship. Now you so much lonely. You were just you were just so much you need a job. Now you complain about your job. You the one missed the call up. The call that Yahweh gave you. Now you complaining about it. I was better off in Egypt. I had the onion. We had you was getting your tail beat up. You had a black eye every day. Shut up. We always looking at the, um, y'all would give us everything. And we always look at it so negatively. What about the positive side of it? I'm so thankful Yahweh gave me this. I'm so thankful Yahweh gave me peace. I ain't got to deal with this and deal with that. And in due time, when I'm ready, Yahweh will give me the desires of my heart. 
when my ways please him. He has not lied. Y'all ain't the one that lied, sugar. Yahweh don't lie. He can't lie. When your ways please him, he make even your enemies to be at peace with you. What enemies? He come at them boys and them girls trying to fight you. That, that's not the enemy, sugar. The enemy is you. Your thoughts about it. He'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. When your ways please, seek the kingdom first and all else will be added to you. I'm a living testimony of that. Now, mm -hmm. they complain, complain. He, he rained down manna from heaven for them. Guess what? They complain about that too. I'm tired of hearing Moses. I'm tired of hearing um, about Abraham all the time. That's all they talk about. I'm tired of hearing about you and Yahweh. That's all they talk about. That's manna from heaven, you fool. Complain about it. Me because guess what? When they complained about it and he gave them those quail, what did it do? They got stuck in their teeth. I'm tired of hearing it because you ain't heard it yet. Problem. That's all they talk about. Really class, that's all they talk about. You or Yahweh, you or you better be thankful that y'all got mercy on you to keep on repeating these things. That's what you should be thankful for. Why are you complaining about it? Sit down now. Let me okay. Ooh. All right. So then. What happened out here, that was the proven ground. Yahweh is testing and proving them. This is talking about something. They were, you know how you could take somebody out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of them. They were out of Egypt physically, but they still had Egypt in their heart. So that had to die off. And so the physical manifestation of that is the old, the old Israel that came up out of Egypt had to die off. So what Yahweh did at a certain time, he sent out spies to spy out this land, Canaan, the Canaan land, the land that he promised that he would give them. Now, Yahweh said the land was flowing with milk and honey and that it was theirs to take. It was promised unto them. He gave the promise to Abraham. So then, oh, you know what? I'm going too, I'm, I'm too, I'm moving too fast. I, I, let me, hold on. Let me catch this now. Before we get to that point, just like Yahweh told Moses, the token that should be unto him that know that, he, that Yahweh sent him, that he would serve Yahweh on this mountain. I, we got to get the vision now. We got to get there. I can't, I can't skip that now. Sorry about that. So after they got out here, um, on June 3rd, because they left the body of Egypt on the 15th or the 16th? 15th? The 15th. Of April. On June third. Right. They on June third, Yahweh they were at this mount. And Yahweh told Moses, tell the people to clean up because in three days he was going to speak to them from this mountain. So Moses tell them, Don't come at your wives, you gotta clean up and all of that. Three days later, on June sixth, the first Pentecost, Yahweh spoke to them from this mountain. He spoke down to them. Um, from this mountain, and it, I'm talking about it, it shakes, it quakes, it scared the crap out of them. Now, Moses, the first trip that Moses took, he was on the plateau of this mountain when Yahweh told him to go down and speak to them. The 24th chapter of Exodus, it said, Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and those 74 people saw the Elohim of Israel. Now, these 74 people were the only ones that saw Elohim or Yahweh in their shape and form. The people that were at the base of the mountain, they didn't see anything because there was a lot of smoke. It was a lot of uh, the cloud. It's all they saw was the cloud. They didn't see anything. Now, these 74 people saw the element of Israel and they did eat and drink. And then Yahweh calls Moses to the top of the mount alone and by himself. And Yahweh showed Moses this tabernacle pattern Remember class, what all that Yahweh showed Moses in this, this, this uh, second trip? He showed Moses his tabernacle pattern. He showed Moses the six days of creation or seven days of creation. And he showed Moses the book of life. Book of life. Right. Those were the things that Moses saw on the second trip. And so Moses is giving, being given instructions on how to build and construct this tabernacle so that Yahweh may dwell among them. Aaron, Nadab, Abiyah, and the 70 elders, they didn't get those instructions. That was given to Moses. And so when they get down here, 
and they get ready to try to build this tabernacle. You got Nathan, Jason, and Cora, which was, ma- I'm talking about, they were master builders down there in Egypt. They had all of the wisdom and all of the knowledge and understanding on how to build those treasure cities. Moses, you take so much up on yourself. That's not how we, it's supposed to be built. We need, you need to do it this way. You're going to mess it. You ain't had no vision. How are you going to tell the one that had the vision that he's wrong? They do it now. Show a million transcripts where Yahweh, through Dr. Kenley, said that you are Yahweh. You got to become conscious of it. You want to tell me he's wrong. Oh, he's fallible. He's a man. He's wrong. Okay. Anyway, so Moses comes down out the mountain with the instructions that Yahweh gave him. He had the tables of stone in his hand. He was up there 40 days. Within that 40 days, the people would saw no Samaritan and just had just agreed with Yahweh that all that Yahweh said we would do and be obedient. Lip service. We do the same thing now. Lip service. But as soon as Moses was gone for 40 days, before 40 days was up, they come down out the mount. You know, he told them to tarry. They came down out the mount. They tell Aaron, make us a God. Aaron puts the gold in, fashions the cow, the golden calf, and brings out, you know, the golden calf. They start worshiping the golden calf. Then when Moses comes down at the mount with Yahshua, his minister, Yahshua said, I hear a noise of war in the camp. What do you mean war? Hold on, watch this one now. Watch this. Y'all can watch this one closer. I hear a noise of war in the camp. Not of being overcome of a mastery. Not that they done beat somebody or somebody has overtaken them. What was the war then? He said of singing and dancing. That's the same war going on now. Yahweh said, sit your tail down to your house. It's a freaking pandemic. But you have people warring within themselves. They just cannot sit still. They just gotta be, they just gotta go out. Gotta be amongst this world. Gotta do the singing and dancing. Same, same thing with the days of Noah. Same thing with the days of Noah now. Up until the day that it rained, they were married and giving in marriage. Singing and dancing. I hear a noise, noise of war, singing and dancing. Having an orgy, worse than his golden calf. Moses got so hot, he threw those tables of stone down and broke them. I'm talking the tables of stone that Yahweh gave him. He broke them. What is that talking about? The first covenant had to be broken so that he could issue in the new covenant. But guess what? When Moses had to go back up the third trip and spew out his own tables of stone, the same law that was written on the first one was written on the second one. What are you talking about? The law was never carnal. The law was always spiritual. It was the man's heart that had to be changed. Yeah, you had those carnal ordinances, but the law, there was nothing wrong with the law. The law was spiritual. Like Paul said, the law was spiritual, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. And so they couldn't keep that law because they didn't have anything in them to keep it with. And so Moses broke those tables of stones. He made Aaron, he, I'm gonna, he, he, he asked Aaron, what did these people do to you that you would cause such great sin. Aaron, you know how these people are. They're stiff-necked. They're hard-headed. I don't know what happened. I just put the gold in. I popped this golden calf. You know. Anyway. So then Moses made him grind it down to powder and they had to drink that bitter mess that they had. Now, they ain't no good where they ain't seen no cat. They could at least get a lamb. A cow. Y'all didn't see no cow. No cow. That brought you up out of Egypt. That's the problem. We don't know who Yahweh is. We don't know where he is. So we follow anything other than Yahweh. And the reason why we don't even know who we are is because we don't know who Yahweh is and vice versa. We don't know who Yahweh is, so we don't know who we are either. You are not that physical body that you see in the mirror. But anyway, so then they had to go through some some things. The Levites had to strap on their swords and kill all those that partook in that mess. And how many did they kill? Was it 3,000? Okay. Yeah. The same amount 
that came in seven years after uh, the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, now according to the Holy Spirit. Seven years later, the Gentiles came in and about 3,000 was added to. Y'all, look, y'all ain't missed nothing. So then, all the things go on and what they have to be tested and proven in this wilderness and things like that. Yahweh gave them the ordinances and the, uh, the commandments and the law, 613 laws and all those things like that. So when it was time for them to go over, Yahweh sent out those spies, those, those 12 spies in the land of Canaan to bring back a report. And so you had those 10 that brought back the evil report. What made it evil? Because they did not believe what Yahweh that Yahweh had given them that land. That's what made it, their disbelief made it evil. I think it's over there in the seventh chapter of Hebrews, also the fourth chapter of Hebrews, the evil heart of unbelief. And so Yahweh, told, matter of fact, let's, no, okay. So Yahweh told them to spy out that land. And then when Joshua and Caleb came back and told them that, yes, it was just, just like Yahweh said, they even brought back evidence. They brought the grape of the vine. They brought the pomegranate. Uh, yeah, matter of fact, yeah, well, no, I don't have time. And so all of these things were done. So when they come back, the people believed the 10 that brought back the evil report as opposed to bring, believing the evidence and the proof that Yashua and Caleb brought back. That's the same thing that happens now. They look at men. And because a certain man that you have set up in your mind, tell you one thing about it with no proof whatsoever. That's right. Believe that you rather believe that than to believe the truth and the evidence and the witnesses that Yahweh has laid down and testified of his son. Bring up all kind of myths. I'm stuff that you know good well you can't prove. Don't even make no sense. Don't even make logical sense. Common sense. And you believe that rather than believe it. That's, but it's got to be that way, though. Now, so that's why we can't get mad about it, even though I know it pisses us off. We can't get mad about it because it got to go. I'm rather be thankful that it, I'm not caught up in it. And we pray for those and hopefully y'all will bring them to it. So all these things are laid down, right? And so then, because they did not believe, because they had to buy the land for 40 days, Yahweh said every day, one year for every day, that's how long you're going to be in this wilderness until every last one of y'all die off. Because at first he wanted to kill all of them. Moses had to plead and beg Yahweh not to do it. But y'all said, I raised up a nation from you, Moses. No, y'all remember, remember Abraham, remember Isaac, remember Jacob. Don't forget, y'all, what you said now. The Egyptians are going to say that you can deliver them, that you did this, you know, da 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 da. So Yahweh, for his name's sake, he didn't utterly destroy them. That's what he said. I am Yahweh and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not destroyed. Because I did make this promise to Abraham. And that was another thing. Now, when Moses was up here in the mount the second time, he only saw from Genesis, the first chapter, where Yahweh showed him the the, um, creation coming in. He didn't see what happened in the third chapter of Genesis. So the third trip, Yahweh told Moses to come back up into the mount the third time, and he had his own tables of stone. That's when he was up there for 40 more days. That's when he saw Genesis, the second chapter, on through. He even saw his birth. And so what, Yah- what Moses saw then, he saw how Satan had deceived Eve and how after that the whole world was deceived. What did he see? He saw the witnesses. He saw the blood that from Adam's head that went to all four corners of the earth. And he saw that Yahweh told Adam, by the sweat of your brow, you should till the ground. And how Michael was the one that cast him out of the garden. And he was up there for 40 days. He saw the blood, the water, and the spirit, and the 40. Then he showed Moses Noah. He saw the blood, the water, the spirit, the 40, again, testifying of Yahshua Messiah. He saw that Yahweh told Noah that it was going to rain and he was going to destroy the world by flood. And Noah had to preach for 120 years that it was going to rain. He put the blood back on the world's head, all four corners of the earth. And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, giving you your water principle. And the angel closed the door. 
giving your spirit prints when it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses is seeing all this in a vision now. But then when he gets to Abraham, y'all is spending a lot more time on Abraham. Why so? Because I'm telling my whole story through Abraham. He came to a man named Abram and told him to separate himself from his familiars and leave his father's household. And so him, his wife, and his nephew left the land of Ur and went to a place that Yahweh showed him of, which was Haran. And then he gave Abraham a promise because Abram desired a son to leave his inheritance to. Abram was rich. And it said that all things were delivered unto me of my father. Because the same desire Abraham had, Yahweh had. Abram was rich. He wanted to leave all that he had to his son. And Yahweh told him, I'm going to give you a son. And I'm going to multiply your son as the sands of the sea and as the stars of heaven. And I'm going to give him this land to inherit. But know, there, know for sure, though, they're going to go into a land and be placed into bondage after a period of time after I, Yahweh, will come in and deliver them out. What are you talking about, Yahweh? I'm telling my story through Abraham. So he made good on that promise. And he gave Abraham Isaac. And before the foundation of Israel or the foundation of the world, you had to have Isaac being slain. And so he told Abraham, he's going to test and prove in the 22nd chapter of Genesis. He said, take thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou love. Even though he had Ishmael, Ishmael was not counted as a son. And so stop telling me that Satan is the son of Yahweh because that's a damn lie. They proved that. Even though he came forth from Yahweh, Yahweh did create him. He is not considered a son. The son of perdition, but not a son of Yahweh. Take thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou love. Offer him up, Abraham. Abraham didn't stagger at it. He got up early in the morning. Didn't ask Sarah no questions. Got up early in the morning. Straddled his ass. And took two witnesses with him, two young men with him. What are you talking about? The law and the prophets has to witness to the death, burial, and resurrection of my son. But he took those two witnesses with him. And they went up to a mountain that Yahweh showed him of. He put the wood on Isaac's back because Yahshua has to carry his cross. Behold, I see the fire. I see the wood. But where is the sacrifice? himself will provide a, well no he didn't say Yahweh he said Elohim himself will provide a sacrifice will provide himself a sacrifice and that's exactly what he did Yahweh manifested in the body of Yahshua Messiah and provided himself to be the sacrifice for, the, for his son and so he is the lamb right here now he is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world because when Yahweh took on shape and form as Elohim, that was a death. He divested himself of his glory. This is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. This is the blood of the lamb that saved those angels in heaven. Not this physical blood down here, because that hadn't even happened yet, for the angels to be saved by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. This is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And he showed that in type and in shadow with Isaac. Because if you read the 22nd chapter of Genesis, how when Isaac put on that altar and Abraham began to slay his son, Isaac, the angel stayed his hand and said, Abraham, Abraham, hold on a minute. Now I see that you have, that you believe Yahweh and you have not withheld thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom you love. And so guess what he did? Instead of him offering up Isaac, he, he gave a ram that was caught in the thicket by his horns. What is that talking about? That specially prepared body. Offered up. Instead of the spirit. So that ram, that male lamb, was caught in the thicket by his horns, which those horns represent the sins of the world. Because after the transgression, you had those thorns and thistles to grow up out of the ground, depicting the sins from Adam's transgression. So he had to have those sins or crown of thorns around his head because when Yahshua comes in to get on that cross, he's going to have to have a crown of thorns on his head. And so they offered up that ram 
instead of Isaac. And Isaac resurrected about that altar after that three days journey. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the death because he was dead in Abraham's mind before he took off on that journey. And that was a three days journey. So after those three days, he had to resurrect off that altar because he was dead and buried in Abraham's country. And so three days later, Isaac resurrects off that altar. And then after the resurrection, that's when Isaac was sent to his wife, sent to uh, find his wife. And that's when the nation of Israel began to be born. That is the death, burial, resurrection, or the slaying of the lamb before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of Israel. So then Isaac has his wife. Isaac has Jacob and Esau. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob had 12 sons. And this is another thing that Yahweh had me looking at too, how it may look like one thing is an accident or somebody's doing something to try to be, you know, deceitful to you. And y'all, we got all that going on for a reason. Because Laban deceived, so-called deceived uh, Jacob when he worked those seven years for Rachel. And he ended up giving him Leah instead. But guess what? That's where Judah came from, the, the loins of Le uh, Leah. Why am I saying that? Because Judah is where the, the lineage of the Messiah. So don't fret. Don't worry about these men, women, children, places, things that look like they're doing something against you. If Yahweh be for you, who can be against you? You don't have to do those things. Because the iniquity of the Amorites are not full yet. Yahweh will destroy them for your sake. Have you not seen that yet? So settle your heart. Settle your mind. Understand that your father has already made a way out of the situation. And it is for your good. You're going to get above what you asked or thought of him. So in that, you patiently wait on Yahweh. Oh, it's hard. No, it's not. Not when you're where you need to be. It's hard when you're in Egypt. That's why you got to get up. Quiet. Yourself. Truth to yourself. Get yourself out of those situations because that's the only thing that led them up out of Egypt. What's the truth? That's the only thing that's going to get you up. You got to preach to yourself, talking about it, venting about it. That ain't going to get it. <clears throat> trying to play it over, over in your mind, trying to figure out how it's going to work. That's not going to get it to yourself and I guarantee you you'll move so now Jacob has his 12 sons Yahweh told Abraham though no for sure they're going to have to go down to a man that's not theirs so what are you talking about Yahweh look when Yahshua came in he had to go down to e jo uh, Joseph had to take him down to Egypt why so because out of Egypt have I called my son so they have to go down to Egypt for a period of time. And so Yahshua had to go down to Egypt for a period of time. Guess how long he was down in Egypt? 12 years. One year for a tribe. Mm -hmm. Out of Egypt. Look now, look, you better stop playing with Yahweh. This is, that, everything was testifying to his son, Yahshua the Messiah. And so what did Yahweh do? to cause him to go down to Egypt. He caused a famine in the land. But guess what? Before he even did that, he sent a forerunner. By the name of Joseph, his brothers envied him because of his dream. His father gave him a coat of many colors. His, they envied him because of his dream. So they sold him to some Ishmaelites. What is that talking about? Yahweh ain't missing no words, y'all. Now, he, did not he say that Ishmael was counted as the flesh? Hagar represents the flesh, the bondwoman or bondage or the flesh. And so the Ishmaelites had to be the ones to bring him down into Egypt because he had to put on a fleshly body and come down. The forerunner I'm talking about now. And so the flesh had to be the one to bring him down into Egypt. We're talking about y'all coming down from two spirits, coming down and manifesting in the flesh now as the forerunner, as Yahshua said, he said, I must go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you can be there too. So Joseph had to go prepare a place for them that where he was, 
they could be there too. That was the only way that they could be saved was by going down into Egypt because there was no more food in the land of Canaan. And if they wanted to live, they had to come down to Egypt. And what did he say? I heard there was corn in Egypt. Corn have ears, don't it? <laughs> don't it? Yeah. <laughs> Faith come by hearing the word of Yahweh. And so they had to go down into Egypt in order to live. So when they get down there in Egypt, they had the best land, which was Goshen. Yahweh separated his people from the people of the world. Stop acting like you were the world being. If you've been separated, be separated. All right. All right. Hallelujah to that one. Okay. So they go down there in Egypt, and at first, everything was good. They had the best land. Pharaoh did along with them. But Yahweh told Abraham that he was going to place him in bondage. Who was going to place him in bondage? Pharaoh or Yahweh? Yahweh placed him in bondage. So what did Yahweh do to cause that to happen? He caused the Pharaoh that knew Joseph to die off. He caused Joseph to die off. And he raised up a Pharaoh that would evilly entreat these people. How do you know he's going to evilly entreat them, Yahweh? Because Yahweh, in the 16th chapter of Proverbs, Yahweh said that the preparation of the heart and man and the answer of the tongue comes from Yahweh. Yahweh prepared his heart to be evil. Right. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Before any child was born or had done any good or evil, why do you hate Esau, Yahweh? Because I know what's in his heart. I prepared his heart. Same thing in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. The things, it was prepared, it was piped in Satan from the beginning, what he was going to do. He was perfect until iniquity was found in him. Perfect. Perfect for what Yahweh created him for. He didn't, Yahweh, it wasn't like Yahweh didn't know he was evil. And Yahweh found out after the fact. No, it said Yahshua chose his 12 disciples. And one of them was Satan. And he knew that. He chose them for a reason. So, let me get back to my point. So, Pharaoh began to evilly entreat these people. But Yahweh said they were going to multiply. Like the sand of the sea and the stars of heaven. The more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. And they multiplied and then multiplied. And Pharaoh, we, we just read in the scripture lesson, the wisdom of this world. So Pharaoh said, let us deal wisely with these people. That's the wisdom of the world now, with mm -hmm. these people. And so he put taskmasters over them to make them serve with rigor. That's how he was going to deal wisely with them. And the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. And the more you are afflicted, the more you multiply your knowledge and in your understanding. This is a snapshot of your mind now. That's right. That's right. The more you go through things, the more you learn and understand how your father works. That's how much. So it, it's okay. If need be, we go through manifold. Manifold means a whole bunch of. If mm -hmm. need be, we go through manifold trials and tribulations. Right. So if you're going through it, evidently it's needful. You need it. Yahweh's not going to give you something that you don't need. So we go through these things. And so he uh, flicked them, they multiplied. So when they kept on multiplying, he said, good and gracious. Let me deal wisely with them again. So he sent the two Hebrew, the uh, Hebrew midwives out to kill the male Hebrew children from two-year-old down to birth. How do I know a two-year-old down to birth? When Yahshua came in to fulfill it, it was from two-year-old down to birth with him too. And another reason why I know it's from two-year-old down to birth is because Aaron you don't read nothing about him being hid. And if you read the scriptures, Aaron and Moses are three years apart. So when mm -hmm. Moses was born during his death decree, it missed Aaron because Aaron was already three years old. So the death decree was from two year old down to birth. Then it said by faith, Moses' mother hid him, not from fear, but by faith. By faith, Moses' mother hid him for three months. What are you talking about? Because it's a death decree. And so after a death, you got to have a burial. So I got to hide him for three months. I got to put him in the flags of the river. I'm going to put him in the ark. And then put him in the flags of the river. Because it's three months now. So we got to have a resurrection. She didn't know that. She had no clue what Yahweh's purpose was. She was being moved and led by the uh, spirit law. And so Yahweh rewarded her for her faith. Yahweh paid her to wean her own child. 
And so Moses, and another reason why he had to go to the water, because the three depict water. The third step in the pattern is the brazen labor. On the third day, he had to separate the water. So at three months, Moses got to go to some water. Start looking at your life and look at the, and pick up these patterns. And so Moses grew up in the house of Pharaoh. And they said he was deep in the customs and traditions of the Egyptians. He had all the wisdom and knowledge of the customs and traditions of the Egyptians. But when he came back down there into Egypt to deliver Yahweh's people up out of Egypt, he couldn't use none of that knowledge no. and none of that wisdom to deal with Pharaoh and those Egyptians. He had to do it by the word of Yahweh. So now, like Paul said, I didn't come with you with excellency of speech and with, with the wisdom of this world. I speak plainly to you. That look, so then when he comes down here, right where we started at, when Moses and Aaron comes down here, like Yahweh told him to, he went to Pharaoh and said, look, Yahweh said, let my son Israel go. What did Pharaoh say? I don't know Yahweh. Neither will I let Israel go. Who is that on your throne to tell you that you don't know Yahweh? You are Yahweh. Uh-uh. I don't know Yahweh. Mm-mm. Can't be me. Nah. Yahweh said, ooh, Mm -hmm. So Yahweh said, okay, if you don't let him go, I'm going to kill your firstborn. I'm going to kill your son, even your firstborn. He told him that from the gate. Yahweh made good on his word that he gave Pharaoh too, because he did kill his firstborn. So now we're back to where we started. So Moses saw all this in the vision on the third trip. Moses saw all of these things. And so after Moses came down out of the mountain, after the, after the third trip, his face shone. Moses was illuminated because now he has an understanding because when he went on the second trip, he only saw it to Adam in the garden. He didn't see it beyond that. And so when he came down and saw those people had, you know, seeing and all those things like that, he didn't understand it. But now the third trip, he understands clearly. He saw all the way down. He saw clearly what happened now. So now he has an understanding. So that's what Isaiah 8 and 20 was talking about to the law to the testimony. If they speak not according to this verse, because there's no light in them. So that light that Moses our face shone was depicting that he had an understanding now. Now he has a full vision and revelation of the thing. So Moses saw from the beginning to the end. That's why he told him after the second trip, block me out. I pray thee out of that book of life, Yahweh, because Moses has saw the book of life from the beginning. When John sees it from the end to the beginning, Moses saw from the beginning to the end, John saw from the end to the beginning. So when John sees it, he already, the, the names had already been blotted out at that point. So John saw those whose names were, that were not written in the book of life. You follow what I'm saying? That's, mm -mm. Let me keep, okay. So when it's time for them to take over this land and y'all make them wonder and wonder and wonder and wonder and wonder in the wilderness, I don't even know what time it is. I'm sorry, I'm going to, oh, Father, have mercy. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to take up the whole class. Um, oh, my goodness. So then when they um, got ready to take Canaan land, it's, I'm going to after the very last one died off. Then they had to get ready to go on over. So then when they get ready to go on over in Canaan land, I want to, I don't even know if I got time to read that. Hmm. So they had to take the Ark of the Covenant and those, when, the, when the priest feet that take their shoes off their feet again and Michael was there guarding the way what are you talking about because like I, this is the garden of Eden was like in heaven Michael the man had to be cast out Michael had to cast the man out and guard the way and so Michael had to be right there again and Michael said take your shoes off your feet the place that you stand is holy ground and so Yahshua, the son of Nun, had to bow down to Michael. What are you doing? Why is he bowing down to Michael? He crazy. He because he's obeying his purpose. And so when they went uh, to the, when the priest's feet hit the water, it parted and they went through on dry ground again. What are you talking about? Why are you doing it that way? Oh, um, another thing too, before they got to this point, Aaron died off. Moses had to be cut off. Why so? Because 
It is Yahshua is the only one that can take you over. So the law and the prophets lead you to the Messiah. But once you have the Messiah, he is the one that takes you over. So no man knows the son, but the father. No man knows the father, but the son. And he to whomever the son will reveal the father too. So Yahweh told Moses that he would send an angel before them, before him. But he didn't know that Yahshua, the son of Nun, was the angel that Yahweh promised that he was sin until okay. after the third trip. And okay. so then, so after he realized who Yahshua was, Moses had to decrease. Aaron had to be cut off. Moses had to be cut off. And Moses had to do it in the eyes of the people and pass the torch to Yahshua or give him that double portion in the eyes of the people. Said, be of good courage and of good cheer. And he had to pass it on to Yahshua in front of the people. So Yahweh, through Moses, is testifying of his son, Yahshua. This is in type. And then Yahshua is the one that had to take them on over into Canaan land and conquer how many kings? Those 33 kings that he conquered, picking up every year, um, every king for a year of his life that he walked around on the earth, 33 and a half years that he walked around. And so when you look at Moses passing the torch to Yahshua, the son of Nun, at Jordan River, that's in the law. And the prophets, you had to see Elijah doing the same thing to Elisha at Jordan River. So when okay. Yahshua comes in, when Yahshua comes in to fulfill this, John the Baptist, his cousin, he didn't even know that Yahshua was the one, even though that was his cousin. But Yahweh in the wilderness, uh, second chapter of Luke, it said in, in the wilderness, Yahweh told John what to look for because it said that there, there come a voice crying out of the wilderness, prepare you the way of Yahweh. I was talking about John the Baptist. Right. And right. Moses was in the wilderness crying to the people, prepare you the way of Yahweh. Right. That's right. John are the same ones. That's why you have Moses. And, this is a different John. Moses and John looking at the same thing. Moses had to cry in the wilderness, prepare you the way of Yahweh, and had to show them who Yah they had to give it to Yahshua. And so Elijah giving a double portion to Elisha at Jordan River. Yahshua had to go to the Jordan River where John was baptized because Yahweh told John to go to the Jordan River and start baptizing those Jews and look for the one who the dove, the, the spirit of the, the spirit descend on in the form of a dove. That is my son. That's who John was looking for. So that's why John had to start baptizing those Jews because he was looking for the Messiah. That's right. That's right. At Jordan River. And so yeah. when Yahshua came to John to be baptized, Yash John said, what? Yahshua said, I have no sin. He said, wait a minute. I have need to be baptized of you. Are you coming to me? For, permit it to be so now, John. It becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. He baptized Yahshua when he put that earthly body in that water and that earthly body came up out of the water and the water rolled back off that earthly body and that dry land appeared. And then the seed of vegetation went on into fruition. Yahshua went on into his ministry. Look, beautiful. I mean, beautiful. And when at, even at the Red Sea, it said that they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, right? And so Yahshua, the Messiah, fulfilling all of these things after he was baptized of John. He went into the wilderness for 40 days because the children of Israel had to go into the wilderness for 40 years. Fulfilling all of it. Every last bit of it. It's so many things that he was doing that just, I mean, he just fulfilled every jot and every tittle. Why so? So that you would know that it was him. That was Yahweh back in the law of the prophets testifying of his son. And so when John baptized Yahshua and he saw the spirit of him in the form of a dove, that's what he said, behold, the lamb of Yahweh, my cousin. He said, behold, the lamb of Yahweh that take away the sin of the world. So John was born with the Holy Spirit. It said that Elohim a hundred times spoke to us in the matter by the prophets. But then the last time spoke to us by his son. I still Yahweh speaking. Yahweh had to show you who the son was. And so Yahweh recognized through um, John recognized by the spirit of Yahweh in him who Yahshua was when Yahweh told John what to look for. Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh will take away the sin of the world. That was at Jordan River. But now, when it's time for Yahshua to go to his uh, cross, he got to get all that. He got to get the double portion. 
because that was Yahweh testifying of Yahshua through John the Baptist. The, the Holy Spirit wasn't given on a permanent basis at that time yet. And so when John got put in prison, all of a sudden now, wait a minute, go ask him, is he the one? Or should we look for another? What are you talking about, John? You just said that was, no man know who the son is but the father. That wasn't John saying who Yahshua was. That was Yahweh in John showing you who his son was. And so after he's identified, now then, it's him who has to bring you to Yahweh. And so that's why Yahshua the son of Nun had to be the one after Moses and Aaron testified to Yahshua the son of Nun. He had to be the one to bring them on over into Canaan land, showing you that Yahshua the Messiah has to be the one to bring you to Yahweh in you. Because he is the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, and the revelation of Yahweh and his purpose. Where is he revealing Yahweh to you at? Right there in you. And so when you were, when you are when you're shown who Yahweh is, that's when you realize who you are. And so when they go over here into Canaan land, they had to move as a unit, as one. And so the same thing, you have to be in the body of Yahshua the Messiah because he's not giving his glory to another. And if that be not who you are, then you will cease to exist. You will be destroyed. He said he was destroying them by the brightness of his coming. What are you talking about brightness? Who is he? Yahshua is not this physical body. He never was. He put that physical body on as a special special prepared body that had to contain the blood that was to atone for the sin of mankind. But that's not who Yahshua is. Yahshua is the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? It is the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of Yahweh and his purpose. And so the eternal life that he is going to give you is the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh and his purpose. That's when you will know that Yahweh is the only true El, and he's Yahshua the Messiah whom he sent. And when you know that, that's when there's no more you. Now you become one with that knowledge, one with that understanding. And you, as you used to be, the way that you used to think, that's what's destroyed. And the real you is made manifest. Moses' face shown to show that this was the token that should be, that should be given unto you, Moses, that when you come to this mountain and serve me on this mountain, that's how you're going to know I sent you. And he said, Moses, don't worry about that. I will, I will be with you. What you wear. Now Moses has that illumination and now he knows fully. And so after that illumination, then when Aaron and uh, Miriam pissed Yahweh off, he told them, I speak to the prophet and uh, speak to y'all by prophet and by dreams, but not so with my servant Moses. With him, I speak now to not what Moses said is me talking because now Moses is conscious now of who he is. And that's the same consciousness that you have to go through. And this gospel is what reconciles you back to the spirit of Yahweh right there in you. When I say the spirit of Yahweh, understand that I'm talking about the knowledge of Yahweh, the wisdom of Yahweh, which the world cannot receive. So the world that was placed in the man cannot receive the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh. The part of mind cannot receive the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh. That's why it has to be destroyed by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah is the death, the burial, the resurrection and ascension and outpouring of the Holy Spirit of Yahshua the Messiah. And so these things have to be preached by the law and by the prophets. I hope something's been said this morning that you got something out of. And with that, I say hallelujah. Woo hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Have mercy, have mercy, I do want to apologize. I did not take the whole class. Uh, Dr. Boston, do you have any words you want to share before we conclude? I can't you gotta hear unmute him. Yourself. I can't hear you. Uh, Dr. Boston, if you want to unmute yourself, please, if you have any words you want to share with us. Okay, he might be having some technical difficulties. Let's see. He's on the phone, so he's going to have trouble. Can you hear us? No, he's trying to unmute. Yeah. Let me see. 
bless you. Can you, uh, he's having some trouble. I'm reading his here. Hold on. I don't want to be out of order, but I want to say this has truly been a great class this morning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We I'm needed that. Can, let, me, mm -hmm. let, me, um, let me see if I can unmute everybody for just a second. So he can, can you hear that? No, he's trying to unmute this. Um, try it now. You're unmuted on the screen, but not on the phone. All right. Well, you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. And maybe the volume on your computer is muted. I mean, or you're probably muted. It's probably like we can't hear you. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and conclude class because I can't, um, we can't hear you. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments? I have one comment. Um, I enjoyed yes, class today, but I did um do the need to um correct something that I said in my um, testimony last week. Um, when I referred to uh the slaying of Goliath, I said Daniel, but I meant David. So I just wanted to make the correction of my misspeaking. That's all. All right, it's me. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? I'd like to make a comment. Um, okay. I truly enjoyed class today. And uh, what I got out of class, I heard the correlations. We so need the correlations to understand about this teaching. But I also saw the revelation given too. And um, I heard the speaker speaking by correlation and revelation. And this is what I look for because we have a lot of correlations and we need the correlation. But oh, it's so good when you could hear the revelation and see the reality of this teaching. And I find myself looking when I listen to class and listen to speakers. I look for that revelation. And of course, the revelation has to come from within. But also, when you're listening to the speakers, you want to hear the correlation, follow the correlation. But when you hear that speaker uh, speak with the revelation of Yahshua, the Messiah, and see the reality of the thing. That's what it helped to establish one's faith. And of course, it's through the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua, the Messiah. I truly enjoyed class today. Thank you, Yahshua. I really yes, did. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Very good. I enjoyed it too. Um, I, we do have a question. The question was, I said that Yahweh, I mean, I said that Satan was the son of perdition and not the son of Yahweh. Let me clarify that. So when we go over there to, um, where is the scripture where it says, um, if son, then heirs, heirs with the Messiah. Can y'all get that for me? Somewhere in Romans. Um, So again, Yahweh is telling his story through Abraham. And even through the even through um the migratory track as well. So let's do Abraham first. So Abraham had Isaac and Ishmael. They both came forth from Abraham. It's in but Galatians Yahweh four and seven. Okay, thank you, Galatians 4 7. But Yahweh told, Yahweh said, not Abraham, Yahweh said to cast out the, well, Sarah said, cast out the brown woman and her son because she cannot be heir with my son. Why is he doing that? 
because it's telling us that somebody Yahshua and Satan, the mystery of righteousness, the mystery of unrighteousness, of mystery of iniquity, excuse me. So he was cast out. He was not counted as a son. Matter of fact, so Yahweh told Abraham to offer up his only begotten son, Isaac, whom he loved. Yahweh knew he had Ishmael. But he, he didn't count Ishmael as a son, even though he came forth from Abraham. The son is the heir of the father. Satan's place is not found in heaven anymore, period. He is not a son of Yahweh, even though he came forth from Yahweh. That's right. Just because you came forth from him doesn't mean you're a son of Yahweh. That's right. Just like with, just like with all the substance that you had down here in Egypt. The gold, the silver, the all those all the substance represents the spirit of Yahweh that created everything. Because Satan was created from Yahweh by the spirit of Yahweh. But the same gold that they used to make these vessels here, which these vessels represent intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, power, foundation, strength. That's what those uh, vessels represent if you look at the Elohim books. That same gold was used to make this golden calf, which was an idol that had to be destroyed. And so you have the same lump to make a vessel unto honor and a vessel unto dishonor. Mm -hmm. Satan was created by Yahweh, but he is not a son of Yahweh. That's why Yahweh called him the son of perdition. Yahweh didn't call him a son of Yahweh. Right. Over there in Job, it said the sons of Yahweh came together and Satan came also. Right. Now, if Satan was considered the son of Yahweh. He wouldn't have said Satan came also. Satan's not considered the son of Yahweh. So, when you read over there about that now we have become sons of Yahweh, us now. Now we are joint heirs with the Messiah. Satan can't be joint heirs with the Messiah. He has no, he will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. He is the son of perdition, not a son of Yahweh. I hope that makes it, I hope that helps, I hope that makes it clear. Can we just get Romans, um, the eighth chapter, 16, 17 verse? Yes, ma'am. Romans 8, 16. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. And if children, then heirs, heirs mm -hmm. of Yahweh and joint heirs with the Messiah. If we suffer with him, we may be glorified together also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I'm the joint heirs of the Messiah. Satan is not. Another example, you look at Cain, I'm not Cain, uh, Noah and his three sons. He's always telling his story now. Noah and his three sons, which you had Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was a third part of the sons of Noah. He was the third. He was not counted. And so Yahweh said he would persuade Japheth to dwell in the same tent with Shem. Cain, I mean, Ham was cursed. Well, his son was cursed because of what he had looked on his father's nakedness. He was not counted. You have the Jew and the Gentile. Then you also have the nations of Ham that were not counted. Yahweh recognized two, two groups of people, the Jew and the Gentile. Those are the ones that Yahweh promises to. He wasn't talking about the Canaanites, the, Ham, the uh, Canaanites, the, Heb the Hebites, the Jebusites. All of, all of those were descendants of Ham. That's why Yahweh destroyed all of those nations because they were not counted to receive the inheritance of Canaan land. They had to be destroyed. But it was given to Israel, and the Gentiles will be grafted in seven years after Pentecost. But it was not given to, after the flesh, it was not given to Ham because he was the third part that was to be cast out. Just like Satan and uh, Satan was cast out in the third part of the stars of heaven. The same, same um, type of shadow, I guess you would call it. So I hope that... Does that get it? Does that Hi, Carla. It's, it's Janine. I, I, I asked the question because it did throw me a little bit. And I guess I just wanted mm -hmm. to um, say, I think that it's about when it's in, it's, it's got to be put in its proper context. 
I think that's what you you did in, in clarifying that because we know that Yahweh created all things. And when we say we, we've got that chart where you've got the son of perdition and the, or the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of iniquity. And then you have uh, Yahweh reflected above that. So you know he's running both mysteries. But when we talk about, so he's the son of perdition, but perdition, that still is something that Yahweh established, created, and so forth. So I think that's what was was uh, a little bit confusing for me because that's just, a, mm -hmm. it's so bold. I mean, the, the whole concept and idea of in context, he is not a son in the purpose. And I get that. But the creative right. part of that still, and he is called a son, a son of perdition, and that's not of Yahweh. I get that. So I just wanted to just kind of talk that out a little bit more. So thank you. I'm cool. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. But yeah, if you go back and listen to the lecture, I think I, what I said was that he was um, the son of, he was not a son of Yahweh. He's not considered a son of Yahweh, but he is a right. son of perdition. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and he was created by Yahweh. I think I did say that too. But yeah, it, I'm glad you said that because I'm sure other people needed to hear the um, full explanation of it too. So that's, that's good. Very good. He always used you to bring things all the way out. That's good. Very good. All right. Any other questions or comments? Yes, just one. <clears throat> we have to. This is Hoshi Love. Um, my comment is that. Uh, to emphasize the fact that we've got to keep in mind that this is Yahweh's story. It's his narrative. And he set up all the types and titles according to how he structured his story. And that never changes. So there's never a time when our imagination or what we think fits into his story. Not in terms of uh, the credibility of his story. That's why the scriptures are so confusing. Because people don't know the, the language of Yahweh. And only through Dr. Kinley has that language been made manifest through us. And it's by the types and shadows that we can learn and understand the language of Yahweh. That's my comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Any other questions or comments? Only that if I would appreciate if I could get a copy of the class today. And you owe me, um, Dr. Carla Carter. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, it's actually posted on you. Do you have access to YouTube? No, I'm on my phone. Okay. Well, if I send you the link to YouTube, would you be able to click on it and watch it? I think I would be. Yeah, I tried okay. that okay. way. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll email much. you the link. Yes, ma'am. I, I do owe you some more um, <laughs> links because I promise you I'll get those to you I today. know you're busy. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, <ma 'am. laughs> All right. Any other questions or comments? Or any debts I need to settle? <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> no, I'm saying any, any other debts I need to settle? <laughs> oh, um, not that I can think of right now, but you know I'll let you know. I know. I already know. I will make sure I send that to you as soon as we get through class. Thank you very much. And good, good afternoon, brethren. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good afternoon. All right. Any other questions or comments before we conclude? My poor daddy trying his best to be in. He can't, he can't hear him. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we do have um, the Basics and Foundations class tomorrow. We were pairing up in groups to um, the same top, same word, same topic, same um, whatever. And then so it will start at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm so excited about tomorrow. I cannot wait till tomorrow. So if anybody wants to join us on Zoom, because it will not be um, streamed live, it will be recorded and posted later. But if you want to join us live tomorrow in the Zoom class, send us an email at the Meridian class at gmail.com and I'll send you the Zoom link to join us tomorrow night. Um, and I think that all 
All right, yeah, I think that's it. All right, let's go ahead and conclude with the doxology then. The doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Oh my voice. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let everyone say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.